Okay, guys. Good morning. Good morning. About to get into Sunday stuff. First thing I'm going to do, of course, because Sunday dinner is a slow cook kind of meal today. So in the meantime, so that my family's not hungry. And good morning. What we're going to do is we're going to make some scramble stuffed baked potatoes. They've already been in the oven for a while, meaning the potatoes. And now we're just making this nice butter that's gonna be filled with all kinds of ingredients that we are then going to add to them. So, but on the menu today, we're gonna to have like an apple crisp. And one second, my oven's doing something crazy. dishwasher coming on when it should not be on so in this we're just going to do some butter we're going to also use some rosemary leaves dry i have some fresh rosemary here but i'm gonna use some sprigs of that in the short ribs that i'm making but back to what we're making today we're going to do a granny smith apple crisp with some sweet ricotta cheese in it we're going to do red wine vinegar slow cooked short ribs beef we're going to do some slow cooked smoky collard greens and i'm going to make uh now i'm not good at my spanish pronunciations but i believe it's uvolo raviolo which basically is runny egg yolk ravioli so that's what's going on for dinner today but right now we're concentrating on brunch so into this blender and this is a great way to use your leftovers. Get rid of your stuff. I'm gonna use the last of that smoked cube ham. And this is a company that I absolutely love, Mazetta. And these are pitted Greek Kamata olives. They did not have pesto at the store today. And I still want to build a really good spread to put with the eggs. So I'm gonna put a few of these in. And a little bit of the juice too, not too much. Probably got more in there than I wanted in there. And I'm making a mess. Don't you hate it? Hold on one second. Ay, ay, ay. In the summertime in Georgia, I don't care how clean you keep a kitchen or a house, the gnats seem to always find their way in. So I'm extra conscious this time of year trying to keep them from getting in here and causing conflict. Taste things to get your flavor palette, know what you're working with. Good. All right, that should be funny. Mm -hmm. And just to make sure it has some other flavors too, you're gonna add just a little say it's on complete seasoning. Just a little, not too much. So I want to overpower things. All right. I'll throw all this stuff away too. All right, so. I should plug this in, right? Or else it's not gonna work unless I know some type of magic that I'm pretty sure I don't know. So, I'm gonna put that in. I'm gonna pour it a little bit. I'll see what we got. I think that looks pretty good. So we're just going to let that sit for a bit. And I'm going to stuff that too, just to make sure, because I have seen one or two gnats in here, so I'll make sure they don't get in that before I'm ready to use it. So I'll be back in just a few. All right, guys. So sometimes, just because I like to give y'all a little scene into what's happening, <clears throat> we are about to brown these lovely rich mushrooms i forget what type of mushroom it is and i already threw the package in a way so next time because i cook these often i'll be sure to let you know what they are 
to me, these are the perfect, like, vegan alternative if you want scallops. To me, it's very similar in texture. So we're just going to put these in. Get a nice brown on them. Because they are also going to be part of your potatoes that you're making. And I'm about to check on my potatoes and see how they are coming along. See if we're getting any softness to them. So we're going to let them go a little longer. I'm going to drizzle a little more oil on them because it helps speed the process up a little bit. Just drizzle a little on there. Because I already cut the part that we're going to hollow. I made the indent already. So that oil will go into those crevices. I'm sorry you can't actually see it. Let me see. You can see them in there lower you a little bit then you might be able to see so you can see where i had already cut like the little squares in them all right and we're gonna let those continue for a bit and we're gonna begin to like check these see they're getting a pretty brown to them just flip them over like so Once they're done, we're going to just move them back to the tray that they were on before they cooked and set them aside because I'm going to use this pan to make just my little bit of scrambled eggs for just those tiny little potatoes. But we still have to hollow them out and then put the stove back in and bake them just a little longer. So it's kind of like a twice-baked potato. So that's all I'm waiting on currently. So we'll be back in a bit. Okay, guys. So I'm back. And you can see that I just hollowed out the brunch potato boats. All that flesh is over here because we are going to rebake it also. We are going to give it some seasoning and we are going to rebake it. All right. We're also going to melt some cheese in these to create a nice little place for <clears throat> everything to sit nicely. So the first thing I'm going to do is start with my provolone. <clears throat> you can tear it and get it to fit in there as, as best you want. I like to get a good amount of that in there. Like so. And I know this doesn't like much to eat right now, but it's going to end up being a good little morsel because it's also going to have your scrambled eggs. <clears throat> so we're going to put these here. This is what you call making the most of your workspace because we're also going to toast some bread there. This food processor is a different than my other one. It has a hole in the bottom, so when you lift it up, everything comes off. That's what we do. So we're going to have to spoon it from over here. Let me get a bowl to put some in so you can still see what I'm doing. Unfortunately, like I said, the way that was made, if I take the bottom out, we got a mess. <clears throat> So we'll use our little pretty skillet here real quick. Right. 
We're getting ready also. We're, I've already got the greens going because, you know, I'm slow cooking mine. So they're going to take a few hours to get done. This is that yummy Mediterranean Greek style olive butter that I created to put in the potatoes. And it's going to be yummy. When your family doesn't like olives, sometimes you got to sneak them in and create it with this because olives really have good health qualities that are good. Yeah. Every once in a while, I like to sneak some in here. That's my Alexa Let me know. I have some items arriving today. All right. So we're going to put this up. Me to know, honey. She's like, hey, 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 you got some stuff coming. <laughs> so, I like to take my leftover bread and it can be any type of bread. Doesn't matter what it is. And I chop it into sort of like croissants, if you will, only bigger. So, we'll do that real quick. We're going to put them on the same baking sheet. set up for someone who's into culinary work and this is not where I do my professional stuff at anyway I might cook the occasional family dinner here if someone asks me to but definitely not where I do large 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 cooking from it simply wouldn't even be possible here and plus that's against the law folks you can't do it at your home you can't but you shouldn't if you get caught it's bad business stuff so. All right, I'm gonna give a sprinkle of garlic powder to everything, of course, because you want garlickiness in this dish. I'm compensating again for the fact that these people did not have pesto, so. And then, of course, a drizzle of olive oil makes everything better. Especially when you're toasting your bread. All right, and also to make the bread super yummy, you wanna put some freeze dried basil or fresh basil, whichever one you have, like so. And you can also put some on your potato mixture. I'm gonna put this back in the oven this long enough to get everything brown. And in the meantime, I'm gonna go ahead and start scrambling up my eggs and i'm also going to load my slow roaster with our short rib neck bones and veggies so the first thing we're going to do is put this in the oven we're going to put them on the low rack the oven's at 420 and then i'm going to move you guys with me all right my love so before i even start scrambling my eggs we are going to go ahead and get these in their lovely new home. I marinated them overnight with all kinds of good stuff. I'm just going to pour that right on in there. And then we're going to throw this bag away. Alright, let me get a wooden spoon so we can stir it all around here for you. Alright, I'm going to spread those out like so and you can turn this down now i had it turned up just to get it going but now you want to turn it down because remember we're doing low and slow so that they just fall right off the bone gonna grab our other ingredients <laughs> so on this first go round, we're just putting in the veggies and then about two hours into this, 
or an hour and a half in, I will come back. I just lost some onions into my sink. It's okay. Sorry. We're going to come back and we are going to put in. First thing we're going to put in right now, along with the veggies, and it's a rough chop because. It's really for flavor other than these larger chunks of veggie, but my daughter doesn't like onions, so I try to leave my onions large enough that I can pick them out when dinner's done. gonna grab just a few other things that I want in this to make it just so good that it's just like oh my god you died and going to heaven we are going to add and then I'm gonna get into making these scrambled eggs I'm not gonna show you that because y'all should know how to make scrambled eggs I'm gonna salt these just a little more <clears throat> we are going to throw in some rosemary sprigs Rosemary is an aromatic. It, it's, it kind of scents your meat, but it also provides taste to. And then, I do not throw away my carrot stalks. I use them because they actually have a crap ton of flavor in them also. Just put them in there like so. For most things, the stalks are actually where most of your flavor are, and a lot of people don't know that. So, if you didn't know, today you've been educated on the topic. We're going to add some jerk seasoning, because I want these to have a jerk flavor to them. Add as little or as much as you like. Alright. And... We're going to add some red wine vinegar. Then, like I said, a little later, I'm going to come out here and I'm going to add actual red wine to it and finish braising in the actual alcoholic version of the wine. Um, hold on. So, some of the people should know, if they don't know it, when you cook alcohol, the part that would make you drunk comes out but yeah if you have someone who is in recovery I still think you probably couldn't cook with wine but yeah I don't know why I can't get this off y'all I'm sorry this is taking way longer than it should the universe does not want me to open this do not try what I'm doing right now at home it's a good way to open yourself but all right, so oh, it's one of these little tops. I hate these. Again, be careful with your knife when doing things like that. I'm going to add some of this red wine vinegar. Again, this is vinegar, so not a whole lot. It'll be so tiny you can't eat it. All right. And at this point, we're going to cover it up. We're going to get the onions that fell in my sink and put them in the trash. And we're going to let this slow cook for a while. So I'll be back in a bit. All right. So here's the finished item. You can see I just let some of the potato drizzle on out of there. And you've got the arugula bed on the bottom. We've got the seasoned toast made from our bread. Hold on. All right. So here we have today's breakfast. This is a twice baked potato and it has, and then I made a butter because I didn't have pesto out of Mediterranean Greek, I can't, it began with a K type olives mixed with butter and olive oil. And then we also stuffed the potatoes with provolone cheese. There's also provolone in the egg. And so there you have it, brunch till dinner's done. All right, guys, so my apples are finished cooking, and so I'm going to get them into our casserole dish. Get 
my spoon here, just in case I need to put more in. All right, so these are my freshly cooked apples and then mixed with the apple crisp mix that I did buy at the store. And I also put, <clears throat> now I can take that off, I put some freeze-dried ginger in it because ginger just pairs so well with the flavor of apple. And that's literally pretty much all there is to that. <clears throat> I am going to add a second half of the apple crisp dessert mix just because I like for mine to be pretty thick as far as things go. You don't have to. It's up to you. <clears throat> sealed a little differently than last ones. The last one was much easier to open. There we go. So just stir that in. See it gets thicker. The more of that you add the thicker it is. And we're just gonna have this simply serve with ice cream. Now to make this really, really aromatic and tasty, we got one more component. So if you are not familiar with this, we have star anise, star anise, which is basically what fennel comes from. And it is a very licorice tasting aromatic. And it's also really pretty because they look like stars. Just put a few of those. I have tarragon oil too, but no oil is needed for this recipe. But all of these things kind of have a licorice-ness to it. Now when you use fennel root to cook, it's not so sweet. But yeah, in other areas it would be. So you just want to get all that off a little hot. Might burn your finger. And I've had my oven preheating all day, so we can just put this in there. It's good to go. So what we're about to do right now is get our ravioli sections together. <clears throat> Make our bag because we're going to need it because I am not going to be ready to fill and make ravioli to about five because we generally eat dinner at six. All right. So, for the most part, this was originally just going to be nothing in here, but just a yolk. But I decided, as I always do here at Saucy Duck, to put my little spin on it. So mine are also going to have some fresh dill inside of them. Okay? Just a little fresh dill. You can't go wrong with that, right? You want to just put some flour on there so your pin doesn't stick. And we're gonna get our blade out because we want to make this into a smaller section so we can roll these, roll the sheets relatively thin. All right. So 
I'm going to use the bag we originally had first and just set these other pieces in so that your dough doesn't get dry. Again, put just a little flour on top so your pin doesn't stick. And you're just going to begin to roll. I have a pasta sheeting machine, but until I get my other commercial grade tables in here that I can latch it to, this just makes more sense right now. And I'm making my, I won't call them famous, but my, what I'm known for, my large roll ravioli. We are still not thin enough. The test is holding it up and seeing how well you can see your hand through it. <clears throat> I just got some more culinary items in today because let me tell you this. You, like, can never learn too much. I'm really good at what I do already, but culinary food, for example, costs a shit ton of money. I'm certified in all the safety things and things like that I need to know, but <clears throat> if you really, really, really are serious, you'll get the textbooks and you'll learn, and I watch a lot of other chefs' videos too, like master class stuff, because it's important to me to really, 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 really excel at what I do. I don't know if it's that important for anybody else. I'm not gonna judge other people on how they do things. But for me, it is very, very, very important. And I wanna make sure I'm providing my customers with the best. Um, I recently had a day where I don't feel like I did my best for a customer. Um, I tried to do my best, but my fryer did some other things that I did not realize till after I had already put the food out. Um, but because customer service is absolutely so important to me, I have told that person next time they get something from me, they need not worry because they will also get two additional meals free. Um, I just feel like that's the correct thing to do in a situation like that. Some people probably wouldn't have done that, but for me, that's how I do things. So if you're ever dissatisfied with something I give you, rest assured, and you know what? See, I'm not going to like how that is quality-wise, so we're going to toss it and put it back in the bag because I might find something else I can do it later on this week. I don't believe in being wasteful, but I also don't believe in using crappy stuff. Um, Yeah, for me... I personally did not like how things turned out for her. She didn't hit me up to complain, but I know. I know what I'm capable of. And we're going to sit these in plastic too, just so they don't dry out until I'm ready to make them. I know what I'm capable of. I know it wasn't my best day. And um, so for me, I would rather give that person some free meals to make up for it. Um... I did give them a whole lot of food, so I don't feel like I need to just give them totally free. But say if they buy four, they'll get two more meals free to give them a total of six meals. Um, and on my family orders like that, I do also provide drinks. So they were provided with like a six pack of soda. Um, they got two, con two trays of chicken, one tray of greens. And I think two trays of mac and cheese. So, and homemade biscuits. They were not store-bought. I see a lot of other people who sell trays giving people um, store-bought bread. And I used to do that too. But like, if you know how to do something, why not just go ahead and do it? And now that I know how to make the rolls myself, there's no reason for me to give my customers store-bought unless it's a time crunch thing. And I know that happens sometimes. So, it happens. One of my favorite things is actually making pasta. Like, I just love it. It's so fun. So, I just want to show you, though, how I do this. And the thinnest that it should be at. You probably can't see it, but I can see my hands through it. I'm going to get it even just a little thinner. But, yeah, I'll be back to show you these once I'm ready to fill them. All right, my loves. So... Trying to get just the right angle set here so you can see what's going on with the sauce. This is the water that we're letting heat up to boil 
to make the ravioli we have just a little bit of water in there a half cup because now we're about to start the sauce for the ravioli <clears throat> if you watch my videos enough and hopefully you do you know that there is nothing normal or average about how I do things I experiment with flavors like for me that's important and what I'm using right here is some hollandaise sauce I got like a crap ton of these a while back to Amazon um, before I knew how to make hollandaise on my own I know but I'm taking the easy way out today, so it is what it is. Don't judge me. The next thing we obviously want to put in is some butter. All right. <clears throat> All right. So because we're going to have fresh dill inside of the egg yolk ravioli, we're going to use a little freeze-dried dill in the sauce. I like to match flavors, kind of my thing. We're also going to have some basil. I'm just going to grab everything actually that's going to end up going in there because it makes more sense to me to do that. All right. And grab all the other elements that are going to go in. Honestly, I also docked that holiday sauce because I hate the taste of it. The way it is. The way it came. <clears throat> so, some of the items that we need to put in here. Some of our fresh cilantro, not all of it. Some of it is also going to go in. But what we definitely do want to get all of in there is your shallots. Shallots, for those of you who don't know, is kind of like if a garlic and an onion had a baby. It's a nice little merger. We're going to add a little bit of vintage white cooking wine also to the sauce. You don't need a lot of it. <clears throat> a little Merlot salt. A little cinnamon. Don't question me. Just trust me. Just very little though. <clears throat> Some freeze-dried basil or basil if you're European. <clears throat> and then this is the part that probably will make people go like, what the heck is she doing? Again, I do things differently because I like to go flavor components may not be your thing. You don't have to do what I'm doing, but this is how I do it. <clears throat> I think it makes for a delightful, really unique flavor palette, and I want to apologize for that. Just now hoping, though, that it'll let me actually open it to use it. Stuff's weird sometimes, guys. You just have to figure out how to work around things that don't open the way you want them to. Also going to add a little creamy poppy seed dressing to this. That should be plenty. Alright. <clears throat> and last but not least. A little dash of obey. So, we're just going to begin to mix this up nicely together. And then this is what's going to go over top. Probably easier with the whisker. One moment. So, this is what's going to dress our raviolis. 
Oh my goodness, I hate this thing. This is the worst steamer ever. One of my worst cooking investments because the tray always is where it's supposed to be. So at this point, I'm going to turn it down a little. It's boiling, but I have not made the raviolis lick yet. Any other time it takes longer than that, go figure, right? So you just want to whisk your sauce up nicely together. And you are going to cover it. Let it do its thing on low. And... Now we're going to go together, together, together over here. And we are going to begin to deal with our ravioli. These are items. Not sure why my oven's doing that weird sound thing. It shouldn't even still be on. I'm not sure what that is. Okay. So this is where we grab our egg yolks. Or egg, that's what I should have said. And that's why I should have said, my fridge isn't closed, huh? All right, so we've got our eggs, and we're gonna get a bowl. All right. <clears throat> we're gonna get a rolling pin. Really? We're gonna get a rolling pin. Which I now need to install because it fell. <clears throat> Sorry, I can't take a towel to dry it. Because we can't have it wet while it's touching our dough. Because this recipe calls for yolks. <clears throat> we're going to keep this bowl nearby because we're going to need to use that. And I did not mean to do that. That is something you don't want to do. What I just did, don't do that. I'm going to get these just a little bigger. Uh -huh. And we also need flour now. Because otherwise, that's going to stick, and that's going to be a problem. With your tomato out the way, that's going to be one of your garnishes for your raviolis when they're done. All right? Let's kind of spread that out on your board. Flour your rolling pin, too. It makes your life easier. All right? We're going to uncover this now because we're also going to be putting this in the filling along with the yolk. <laughs> so what do you guys watch on Sundays? Like I literally, I hate to admit it, but I'm a bit of a 90 day universe junkie. So we watch that craziness on Sundays here at my house. I know. It's wasted brain energy. So fun. You know, sometimes we just watch things because they're fun. Not because they're intelligent. We should be watching them, but just because they're fun. Alright. So, if you've been following today's cooking, you'll know that I actually created this concoction this morning when creating. brunch but it'll also provide just the right bed for our yolk put a little dill put a little bit try to keep things centered so this yolk doesn't ooze out when you're cooking alright and you just kind of use your hand and you cup it you can throw them shells in there because 
honestly, that's absolutely fine. Look at how pretty that is. I'm only going to show you one of these, then I'm going to keep it moving because i got to get this work done. So you want to try your best to just kind of stretch this out because you do not want to break that yoke. And you're just going to press down. And we broke the yoke. See, that's what you don't want to do, and I did it. Really bad example of the first one. But I'm going to keep it moving and get these other ones done. But yeah, see, that is what you do not want to have to happen. Well, do not want to happen. So I press down too hard. Everything we do as chefs is not perfect. And that definitely was the furthest thing from perfect. So for the next one, I know now to fill it less and to not press down as hard. But you get the general idea of how to make it, which is kind of what I was interested in showing you. And I am going to, oops, I'm going to set that one because it's still usable. It's funky, but it's still usable. I'm going to sit it in here. And so we are ready to drop these in water. Put a little flour on that yolk because otherwise it's going to make things hell for you. All right, so I'll be back. And hopefully these all turn out really well from here on out. All right, so this is the end result. We got one leaker. But the rest of them, after work, and after I threw in about three that I did not like how they turned out, we got these ready to go into the water. So I'll be back in a few. All right, my beauties. So we are back. I have done most of the plating. We've got the braised short ribs, veggies, greens, the egg yolk ravioli. And we're going to garnish this very nicely. I'm going to put a few fresh tomatoes on that. Just a little something, something. <clears throat> and one second. Oh my goodness, why is nothing ever where I need it? And because this is a Mediterranean based dish, we're also just gonna garnish it with a few capers. Capers are so good. They're just the right level of salty. So just a few capers on it. Lastly, finish it off. Just the ravioli only folks with just a little cheese. Just like that. And voila, Sunday dinner is done. Let me get a pick and a better video close up. Here we go. We have the egg yolk filled ravioli that also has some olives and butter. We also have it topped with fresh tomatoes, fresh gel, fresh cilantro. We have smoky greens collard. We have that lovely super sized white carrot. Can't remember what it's called. Got it from Beaufort's Farm to Market. We have the braised beef short ribs cooked in red wine reduction. And this, my loves, is Sunday dinner with sauces best. So I feel like we have to cut one of these opener. Like, did it even happen? We have that video proof, right? That the yolk was runny. So here we go. Perfectly runny, oozy yolk. And I'm mad because now we've wasted a ravioli. But I had to show y'all. So there we go. Thank you for tuning in. Take care. All right, guys. So here we have the apple crisp. And we are serving it with black walnut ice cream. And the presentation is in a tiny, pretty little black skillet. And I am about to add some syrup to it and get a picture. 